Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the one hand mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. This is a 6,800 watt rigid generator with an 8,500 watt surge. It's called a zero gravity. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to start and operate it. And I'm also gonna have a couple tips on uh, keeping it stored and also the battery uh, charging system on it. The first thing I wanna do is show you all the controls and from left to right here, this is actually your electric starter switch. I'll show you how to operate that. We have here, it's a digital readout, uh, and I would definitely look into your manual to see exactly what all this does. I know I chose, uh, there's a button here, and you hit the select button, and you have a lot of different readouts. Your manual will show you what that is. Over here, we have the outlets, okay, and you have your plugs here, and then you have a bigger one over here for like your 220. Make sure you read your manual for everything. You have over here, this is the on and off switch for the engine. I like this because it's always on unless you hold that button in. So you can't leave this switch off when you start it, which is nice. We have a fuel shut off, which is over here and straight up and down in line, that's off. And then you're gonna turn it this way and that's on. So when it's in line, it's on. You have your idle down and idle off. Now idle down here, on and off. Now it's kind of weird when it's off, it actually will run the machine at full speed all the time. And when you hit the idle down switch, this one has about a 30 second delay. And when you're when you're down, when you're running it and the power comes back on and this is not net needed, it's not asking for electricity. If you leave this on, it'll actually idle down. The only reason why the idle down circuit is there is basically just to save gas when it's not running. I always just leave it in the off position when I'm starting in it, that'll bring it up to full speed automatically. Uh, when you get it running and it's smooth, then you can turn the idle, idle down um, on and then like I said, it's only there to save you gas when the electric electricity is not being used. Right here, it's showing you a low oil shutdown. This is what that light is. So if this light flashes when you're cranking the engine over, then you know you have low, it's gonna be really hard to see, but when the light flashes, it's showing you that you have low oil and it's only gonna flash when you're pulling the engine over or cranking it over. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to see. So that said, you wanna make sure you check the oil, which is here. Okay, this is where the oil cap is. They do have a little graph here that shows that uh, how to check it, which is telling you right here is you do not screw it in. They're showing it here screwed in with the next, it's not. So what you wanna do is you wanna unscrew your cap and check it. Now this has a dipstick on this side. The other side is gonna have a black cap. It doesn't have a dipstick on it, so you don't check it from the other side. Plus the muffler is over there. Just gonna pull this out. And by the bar graph on here, it's got a really long bar graph right here. And as you can see, all the way up here is where the oil level is. I just kind of go by, you want to see, the oil level can come all the way up to the top here, but it's right down at the threads. It's really going to be hard to see. We just changed the oil. I'm going to rock this back and forth a little bit. You can see the oil. Okay, that's about perfect. And if you ever have any problems, if you ran this thing for maybe 24 to 48 hours, and it all of a sudden just shut down and you know you have fuel, the first thing you wanna do is check the oil. And if the oil is low, it will not run. And then you can see by this little red light here, it's gonna start flashing when you're cranking the engine over. So just keep that in mind. Now also, since it has a low oil shutdown, you can actually, it'll think it's out of oil if you're if it's leaning on, on, on like on the unlevel ground. So you wanna make sure that the generator is always running on level ground to make sure that it will not throw itself off thinking that it was out of oil. Okay, so that's the oil there. The battery is over here. And what we're gonna do today too is I recommend one, charging the battery regularly, you know, once a month or once a month, once every other month. These batteries do stay charged a long time. Some of the generators do have a charging system that's on the engine, some of the generators don't. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is, if you have a meter, if, and I'm gonna put a link in the description, if you guys ever need a, a digital meter, I did get this on Amazon, I like this a lot. And basically you're just gonna have to use the DC voltage on this to find out what our their meter reads. And when we start it up, we're gonna check the power before we start it, and then we're gonna check the power after we start it. Now, I might as well do that now. So we put on DC. We're gonna put the negative on negative and positive on positive and see what the battery is actually showing. Okay, so we're showing 1334. That's a very, that's a brand new battery we just put in here. Now, if the charging system works, that's gonna go up. All right, so 13.3, remember that, we're gonna start it up and then we're gonna check it again. 
As far as starting it, now um, I did forget the gas tank's up here. Straight unleaded, right here. Just make sure, I mean, it has all the, the do's and don'ts as far as the E10 and, and it doesn't do E15 e or E85. Just make sure it has a full tank of gas. It does say right here, use fuel stabilizer for storage. Now you do have to use fuel stabilizer and you definitely have to run the machine. I definitely recommend it. Don't let it go more than two months and run the machine for about 15, 20 minutes just to get the good gas from the tank through the carburetor. Down to uh, starting this again, the carburetor is down here. There is a choke right here on the carburetor and it has an arrow. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but there is an arrow right there. Now that means arrow goes this way, choke is on. You could also put on your air box. This is your air cleaner box here. You can always put on like on and then off is over this way. But basically with, with, with the arrow, you just go with the arrow and that's on. Okay, so we're gonna put this on to start it. We do have a recoil starter here. If you need a recoil start, if you need to start this while you're in, in the field and you don't have a battery, you can always just recoil start it. But we're gonna use the electric starter. And you have the electric starter here. And like I said, the off button is here. You can only turn it off, okay? You have to hold this button in for a while before it'll stop, but it's always in the on position. Now, as far as the start button goes, there's a couple different ways here. You have to, that's actually engine off is all the way down. It actually was on right there. So all the way down is off, click it on. You would think you would just push it and it would start, it doesn't. This little black button here, you have to push that down and then Now you have to hold that on, hold that all the way down until it stops running. Now you saw that it's charged at like it was going from 15 to 16. That is what I consider an unregulated uh, voltage. And what it does is, this is what they call an unregulated charging system. And so when the battery is asking for the charge, it's going to look like it's overcharging, but it does come down and it actually everything levels out when the battery is fully charged. I just wanted to voice that over because I wasn't explaining it very well. So this has a charging system. So if you didn't want to put a charger on it every other month, you could come out and it's actually probably better every other month you come out and you run this machine for probably 25 minutes at a time. And that'll also charge your battery and get the good gas from the tank through to the carburetor. Unfortunately with the generator, if you let them sit too many months, you can have the, what happens is the gas will go bad inside the carburetor. It won't go bad inside the tank. The carburetor, let me show you where the carburetor is at. Carburetor is right underneath your choke. So this is your choke here. This is the carburetor. And on the bottom, if you come around here, there's actually a bowl right here. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why don't I just turn the fuel off? Now you can do that. You can turn the fuel off and then you can run it dry by starting the machine up and then you can run it dry. And this little screw right here, this is actually a drain for this bowl. What happens is the fuel inside this carburetor will go bad. Within six months, you can have a, a nasty carburetor. We actually had to put a brand new carburetor on this machine because the carburetor was so bad. So if you run it out of gas, turn the fuel off, then you can unscrew the screw and drain the bowl empty. And if you can do that, then you can store it with the gas that's in the tank. That'll last for a very, very long time, staying fresh in large quantities. But what happens is the carburetors or the problem area is that the fuel will go bad inside the carburetor it is not the machine's fault remember that the fuel goes bad because it sits over time it deteriorates and eventually it'll gum up and it'll really be bad now this low idle that it has a uh, idle circuit on it i'm going to show you this it's going to take about 30 seconds for this to actually operate so this right here i leave it off when i start it just to make sure it comes up to full speed I'm pretty sure it's going to come up to full speed anyway, but we're going to fire it up. We're going to run it, and then I'm going to flip this on. The only reason why this is here 
is that when the power is not needed from the generator any longer, it'll come down to idle after 30 seconds and it'll sit there and idle to save fuel, all right? Um, this is a Yamaha engine and it pro probably gets very good fuel. Um, I wouldn't say mileage, it probably just get good fuel consumption because it is a Yamaha. Um, so it probably doesn't do too bad, but it also depends on how, how much load you have on the machine too. So you gotta keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna start it up again. We're gonna go choke on. Our switch is already on because it's always on. This is the starter switch here. So you, you push it while it's on, that's off. Now I'm gonna try to turn off the engine by flipping this off and we're gonna, I just wanna see if this actually works as the on off switch too. We'll try that real quick just to see that. Now you have to push this down a little bit and then push it forward. way and actually it's probably a good idea to use this switch versus this one over here because I'm not sure why they have two but if you turn this off then it, you never have to worry about leaving this ignition switch here on this is a starter switch but it's also your ignition I, I assume I'm it, not sure if that'll actually kill your battery or not but just make sure you have this off when you're not running the machine just to make sure that you know you're not gonna drain the battery at all so let's start it up again I want to show you how the auto works so switch on Push this down a little bit and then push it in. All right, we need a little choke. This is going to take about 30 seconds. Okay, so for the video purposes, I'm going to cut this short and you're going to see me right back at it. When I said it takes 30 seconds, and yes, it takes 30 seconds. if you're able to hear me what I said but obviously I've said it enough about this idle circuit it's only there to save you fuel consumption when the electricity is not needed from a generator um, the only other thing I left out was the air filter is right here okay this is your air box and in dusty conditions you want to take this screw out here and you want to check the air filter um, if you need to clean it is inside here and it also does show start for the choke okay that lever that I showed you with the arrow it does say start this way and run this way. So you start is this way, and then run is this way. Okay, but it's just as simple with the arrow, you know, after it starts up to take that off. Okay, so as far as if you have to look up any parts for this, the model number is a little tricky, but it's right here. Okay, so this is the model number of the machine, and when you do call up Yamaha or Rigid, I think you need that when you're looking up parts. So that pretty much sums it up for how to operate a Rigid's 8500 watt electric start generator. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends about my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will catch you on the next one.